Thank you for tuning in to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Whether you're listening during your commute, while working out, or just relaxing at home, we appreciate you. Every download, every listen, and every subscription means a lot. Up next, the 12 Kyle podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Man, check this out. <laughs> On this episode, what I want to talk about is um, performing. It's showtime. Like when the lights come on and it's time to perform. Um, I came to this idea uh, from my homegirl, Autumn the Aries. Uh, check out her podcast, The Lit Life Podcast. Uh, one of my favorite uh, podcasts is one of my favorite people uh, out here doing her thing. Um, Autumn, we need more episodes. We need more episodes. <laughs> uh, but I, she did an episode. It was, man, it was easily three years ago. Um, it was an episode that she did with uh, a young lady by the name of Gray Genius. And they talked about performing. And what I did was I wrote some notes down and put it in my notes folder, my iPhone and I was like, I'll get to this episode at some point. But, you know, if you follow me and you follow this podcast, you know that I've often said that um, in a lot of ways, a lot of these episodes that we end up doing, I've treated it like uh, a singer would treat songs that they write or a rapper would treat it like verses that he wrote, he or she wrote. <clears throat> and that's what it was like I literally wrote the notes on this one three years ago and I'm just now getting around to it but it's uh I, I think it's it's a great topic to talk about because like in the episode she was explaining about how uh they were feeling when it was time for them to perform or do something in front of a bunch of people and if the initial thoughts got me thinking back to uh, our youngest child, our only daughter, Skylar. Uh, when Skylar was about three years old, she uh, she took tap dancing, right? And God, it's, it's crazy to think about this memory because it's it's literally was ten years ago. Um, but she was taking tap dance, right? And she had her first performance. Now, again, this is a bunch of three year olds, so even though they rehearsed. They practiced, they practiced, they practiced, they went to rehearsal and everything with the other kids her age. Um, you still don't know what kids are going to do when the lights come on and the curtains open up. And I will never forget it for as long as I live. Um, like I said, we're, we're, we're anxious. My wife and I, we're very anxious. We're sitting in the audience and she had been practicing for <laughs> what feels like months. And so they when they opened up it was her and maybe I don't know 10 other little girls and when they opened up the curtains Skylar and the girls had their backs turned to the audience and so you know you just still unsure as to what's about to happen right and I'll never forget the curtains open up and then the music starts playing and then it hits a note and then after it hits this main note there to turn around and face the audience and Skylar pauses and <laughs> when the note hits she turns around really slow and she looks out at the crowd and this huge smile comes across her face and she just had this look on her face like I got this like I'm about to show y'all and for the next, I don't know, five or 10 minutes or however long they perform, she was incredible. And I'm not just saying this just because she's my daughter and she's my child and I love her to life. But it was crazy to me because like I had never seen, I know she was, you know, she's a little girl, right? <laughs> and You could tell when your kids are confident about certain things. Um, she's always been very confident and very self-aware, very sure of herself even at a very young age, but to see her on that stage and to see other little girls kind of freeze up, but she was like literally and figuratively the star of the show. Like all eyes were on her. 
and she just did her thing and it was so amazing and i <laughs> she won't remember that um but i really wanted to ask her like what was going through your mind because like i'm thinking that she may freeze up she may be intimidated by the audience because she's on a stage and there's a light shining on them and you know how it is if you've been on stage you really can't see into the audience but so, but for so far and i was just i was blown away she really really um, not only did she make me proud because <laughs> she always makes me proud, but I was blown away by how well she performed when it was showtime. And it got me to thinking, you know, along with, uh, Autumn's podcast episode with, uh, the great genius that, you know, showtime, how do we perform or how have I performed when the lights were on? <laughs> um, And it got me to thinking just a couple of things. Um, First, like my first memories of performing. Um, I think my first memories of performing would be things like um, school plays (laughs) in elementary school. Um, Let's see. um, Oh, in church. (laughs) Easter Sunday. Doing those Easter speeches. (laughs) Now, I don't know where you guys went to church, but me... I grew up in a black church, uh, African Methodist, excuse me, African Methodist Episcopal Church, aka AMEs. And every Easter, we would the kids would do that, say their little each Easter speeches, and those were always uh, interesting to say the least. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are probably my first memories of performing in front of people, um, to a lesser degree playing football in the neighborhood when you know the little girls are watching. Oh man, I used to love that. (laughs) I used to love that when you knew the little girls were watching you and watching, well, why is he scoring all of those touchdowns? Listen, I was showing out (laughs) because I wanted to, you know, just like any other little boy, you want the girls to notice you. Um, But those are probably my first memories um, of performing. Um, Like I said, performing for little girls playing football you know, in the neighborhood, that's probably to a lesser degree, but school plays in elementary school and Easter speeches and Easter speeches weren't necessarily hard. Excuse me. They weren't easy because one, you had to memorize your lines. You couldn't go up there with a piece of paper. You had to memorize your, and your Easter speech might've been, I don't know, four bars (laughs) or two bars. Um, depending on, you know, what it was that your mom or dad picked out for you to say, or whatever Bible verse they wanted, or whatever quotation they wanted you to say. But um, it was always interesting until you got your little Easter suit and you were up there saying your little Easter speech in front of the congregation. And you always got the, oh, and people clap and everything. So it was it was always cool. You got your kudos and your, and your, your, your cool points for that. But, you know, those were the first performances. Um, probably as I got older, um, for me, it was still in the church. Uh, particularly as I moved up to being like a middle schooler and then getting to high school, um, I sang in a church choir in my church. And while I wasn't, I wasn't, I was never like a lead singer. Like I was always, always the guy to blend in. I could carry a tune, still can, but I don't (laughs) outside of the shower. Um, but, uh, I remember distinctly, I think I was in like ninth grade, I think. And, um, we were singing this song called Tomorrow by the Wine. It's a very famous gospel song. And I actually had a part in the song where I had a mini solo. And it wasn't long. It was just, you know, like a half a bar. But the thing about it is, is that <laughs> in that verse, I'm supposed to hit a note that's higher than the other notes. Problem is... If you're in eighth or ninth grade, your voice is still changing. (laughs) So maybe one day, one day you can hit that note. The next day you can't. And it literally went from during rehearsals and practice. I could hit the high note with no problem. This particular Sunday, I went to hit that high note and it was not there (laughs) because my voice cracked. And I remember hitting the note and I grabbed my throat because like I couldn't believe that I had just pushed it out and it didn't land. And I remember I I was embarrassed (laughs) because my voice literally cracked on stage. 
And again, it happens because, like I said, you're you're not you don't know how your voice is going to sound on a day to day basis when you're at like I said, when you're in the eighth or ninth grade, because, again, you know, hormones, uh, puberty is hit hitting, if you will. And you just don't know. So. um, But yeah, tomorrow. So every time I hear tomorrow, I think about that part. I think about that time in church when my voice cracked. And what was interesting was, you know, the little old ladies in the church, baby, you did so good, baby. You did so good. <laughs> you know, you, you're never going to get booed at church for, for, for your voice cracking. Um, so yeah, it, it was, um, but that was, it was a learning experience. I think, um, you know, as you get older, showtime means different things. Uh, it could mean uh, that you're going to put your best foot forward, or it could mean that you're going to um, succumb to the pressure. <laughs> I was one that never really believed in pressure. Like I, I didn't, I never really, I, I'm not going to say never, but it was rare for me to get, you know, kind of stage fright or anything like that. So again, going back to Skylar, seeing her perform and then going through that, you know, and having those memories really triggered some things for me because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, you don't know if you're going to have your Easter speech memorized and the kid that goes in front of you kills it (laughs) and has the church, you know, standing on their feet, or you never know if uh, the kid that goes in front of you is going to freeze up or if you're going to stand in front of a crowd and your voice cracks, you just never know. So um, you always have to kind of just be prepared for whatever. Um, For me, it was pretty simple. And I tried to keep things simple in my mind, but what you have in your mind and what actually comes out sometimes isn't the same thing. (laughs) I tell you what, sit tight. We'll take a commercial break. And on the other side, I'll give you some more examples about What happens when the lights come on in this showtime? Sit tight. This is the 12 Kyle podcast. We'll be back in just a second. Are you feeling nostalgic for the golden eras of rap and soul music? If so, tune in to the Rap Soul podcast. We are your weekly journey through the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, spotlighting the music and the hidden gems that shape the soundtrack of our lives. From the powerful beats to the soulful melodies, we bring you the best of the past with fresh insights and stories. Rediscover the music that defined a generation. Subscribe to the Rap Soul Podcast and enjoy the vibes. And just like that, we are back. Once again, it's your boy, 12 Kyle. This is the 12 Kyle Podcast. And we're talking about showtime. When the lights come on, how do you perform? Do you have any memories of a certain performance that you've had where either you did your thing or you did? <laughs> um, before the break, I gave you a couple of examples when I was younger. Now, as I as I got a little bit older, uh, things definitely changed. Um, by the time I got to high school, uh, particularly like my junior and senior year of high school, Uh, I was in this group called Teen Institute at my school at Wilson High School in Florence, South Carolina. Uh, Teen Institute was a drug prevention program. Um, Our school actually had one of the biggest and largest drug prevention programs in the state of South Carolina. And Teen Institute basically encouraged kids to not only say no to drugs, but became kind of like the cool club for kids who didn't do drugs or anything like that. And we had a huge following and we did like different workshops at different places around the the state of South Carolina. And when we would go, when we would quote unquote, take our show on the road, um, we had a small group of about 10, maybe 10 to 15 of us. And there was this show that we would perform and we would perform the show before we actually started our workshop, but we would be sitting in the audience uh, as our mentor would be uh, addressing the crowd. So we'd be in the crowd and then we just start yelling and people would look around and then we would go into our show. Um, those performances, because we had rehearsed them and skits that we would do on stage. Um, those were really, really dope. I still remember them line for line, every single one. Um, those, I, I never got no nervous for those, uh, because you knew, you know, what you were going to do. Um, 
I think uh, getting nervous wasn't like something that I would do. I would actually look forward to it. And then just before the performance would start, the adrenaline would, would rush through. And here's the thing. When you're, when you're performing and the lights are on, I always said this. The cool thing about performing and when the lights are on and it's showtime, you actually have the advantage. You know what you're supposed to say. You know what you're supposed to do. You know if you make a mistake. The audience doesn't. So that particularly bodes well for acting, uh, public speaking, <laughs> uh, any type of performance outside of like an athletic performance. Now, as many of you know, uh, I did play high school football. I played from all the way through high school into college. Um, there were definitely ner- <laughs> nervous times. Uh, I would actually get butterflies before every game, even if it's a game that you know, that because you know, I mean, you know when you're going to play against uh, a team that you're going to smash <laughs> and that you're going to blow off the field. I would still get butterflies because like, the thing about me and football was that I love to perform and I not, it wasn't so much about the crowd, but I love the level of competition. I loved lining up in front of someone and beating them. Uh, not necessarily physically. Cause I'm not like the biggest of guys. Uh, and I definitely wasn't, <laughs> wasn't big in high school, but I enjoy the fact of just competing. Um, I put my skills against your skills and let's see who wins. And I'm willing to bet if I put my skills on the line more than enough times, I'm going to win more than enough times. And it was just the confidence that I had in myself. And and I played wide receiver. And in my mind, nobody could guard me. (laughs) And so, like, even at this age of 51 at the time of this recording, uh, nobody still can guard me. (laughs) But I'm not getting on anybody's football field to run any routes. I, I I can assure you that. I'm way too old for that. Um, but that's just the level of confidence that I had. Uh, the kids call it swag or whatever. I don't call it that. It was just confidence. I mean, like I couldn't be stopped in my mind at least. And I think when you have it in your mind, it transfers over to your performance, particularly if you put in the work. But honestly, no, I was always nervous. You're always nervous until the first hit, until the first bit of contact that you have. And then it feels like a regular game. Um, but I'm always interested in and because I love football and I love the game, I watch the game differently. I watch particularly the bigger the game. I you can you can tell who's nervous. You can see it sometimes in guys' eyes, sometimes you can see it in their bodies. Um sometimes people tend to tense up. Uh it just depends. Uh, and you know, you see it especially on on the college level. Not just football, but I mean like I I watch a lot of women's basketball. Um you can see who's nervous. <laughs> if you come in the game, you shoot an air ball, you might be a little nervous. But after a while, after you bump into somebody or you get to the free throw line, then everything kind of, you realize that you're still on that stage, but you're not bothered by the lights, you're not bothered by the pressure or anything like that. Some people enjoy being in that comfort zone. That's their comfort zone, if you will. Um, but yeah, I always had butterflies before a game. Um, In college, it was a little different because I definitely had butterflies before every college football game. As many of you know, maybe you don't know, I played uh, college football at South Carolina State University. As you see me point to my helmet, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. A couple of jerseys back here hanging up behind me. Um, Yeah, it it was, there was always nervous, nervousness, excuse me. Um, (laughs) It didn't matter you were always going to be nervous about what was going to happen because here's the thing. And I would say this all the time and I live by this. Like it's easy to be nervous about a game because you don't know the outcome. Right. But if I had to do a presentation in my marketing class, Oh, I'm not nervous. Why would I be nervous? I know the outcome. I'm going to get up there. I'm going to do my presentation. I'm going to blow you away and I'm going to get an A. And I felt like that about every single presentation that I did superbly confident in what I was talking about. Even if I had no clue as to what I was talking about, I made it sound as if I knew what I was talking about. (laughs) Um, I will say this, like, you know, and I, and I really truly believe this. 
like most podcasters are gifted with the innate ability to communicate to people. Uh, I think that's something that if you're good at what you do as far as podcasting, people relate. And when people relate, they they tend to you know gravitate towards you. And I don't think that you get nervous through something like that. So there was a time, even on this podcast, where in the early stages, I would be nervous when it was time to to pod. Not now. Um, I've done it for so many times, and uh, it's you know it's kind of like riding a bike. Uh, I used to even get nervous sometimes when I would have guests on early, especially early in the podcast. Um, not now. I mean, like I said, I look forward to having people on. Uh, I look forward to sitting in front of a microphone um, and speaking to you all. But um, nervous, no. Uh, but I did, you know, as far as like presentations, I was a marketing major in college at South Carolina State University. And I'll be honest, <laughs> I would actually surprise some of my classmates because like, here's the thing people had this thing and maybe it was just the nineties. I don't know. People had this thing where I guess they assume because you play football that you don't know things <laughs> or that maybe, you know, you can't put uh, a couple of sentences together. I I, I don't know. I is that's not my, my issue. Um, But what I will say is that I always look forward to my presentations, any type of thing that where I had to do in front of my classmates. I always look forward to that. And <laughs> I will say this as well. I always either wanted to go first or go last in all of my presentations. I never wanted to be in the middle, right? And there's a reason for that because I feel like if if I went first, then it's going to set the tone and the bar for everybody that comes behind me, right? And I had one professor in particular, uh, Dr. Robinson. Shout out to Dr. Robinson. I know she's out there listening and watching. Um, I think she was my marketing professor for a couple of my marketing classes. I remember distinctly this class that we took. It was called International Marketing. I had We had a presentation to do in front of the class, and I know specifically that she made me go first. She made me go first because... She first she took volunteers. Of course, nobody volunteered to go first, but she made me go first because she said, and she told me this later that she wanted me to kind of set the bar for where the presentations were going to be, and she didn't think that people would step their game up unless they had something to shoot for. And she said basically, you know, if you go up there and do what you're supposed to do, everybody else will follow suit. And I, I was, I took that as a compliment. I didn't really want to go first, but I knocked it out the park. <laughs> uh, but more often than not, I wanted to go last. One in, in particular, because if you go last, then one, that's the lasting memory of people who see you or, or hear you talk. But also your classmates would already have performed and, and they said, well, okay, well, we were good, but we ain't touching him like that. <laughs> so. um in a lot of ways, this podcast, uh, who, or what this podcast ended up becoming was birthed into those marketing classes because those classes were, it was showtime for me. It was time to perform. We had to get up and do presentations and public speaking was never an issue for me. Uh, it's funny because like <laughs> my wife, she has to do a lot of speaking at her job and she'll oftentimes tell me like I don't know what to say or I don't know if this sounds right I'm like just flow just talk you know and she's like no I'm not like you you like to talk and I'm like I don't like to talk <laughs> I don't like to talk <laughs> but it's easy and it's like um it's it's something that I've I've just developed over time but yeah in a lot of ways this podcast was birthed in those marketing classes at South Carolina State University because th that was one of the first places where I had a platform where I could talk and reach reach people and they could give me their feedback. They could say what they liked, what they didn't like, uh, which wasn't a lot. <laughs> but um, I, I'd like to say the podcast was birthed there. But showtime for me in the classroom was very key. And I never got nervous about that. Never. I, I look forward to those presentations that we would have in class. Um, 
but speaking of podcasting, you know, podcasting is is in a lot of ways it's it's, it's your performance. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's your performance each week or how off however often you, you know, release episodes. Um like I said, I'm never nervous. I'm always confident in what I'm talking about. And then I want to exude that confidence also into my guests. Uh, I've had guests on here who, before we started, they've admitted that they were very nervous. And I just remind them like, hey, it's just it's just the two of us talking or the three of us talking or the four of us talking. And I just remind them like, yeah, there are a million people that are going to hear this, but, you know, it's OK. <laughs> Only you know what you're saying, and there's not going to be anybody that's going to come come behind you and critique every word that you said. No, it doesn't like it's not it's not like that. Um, but you know, for podcasting, all you have to do is just be confident, and when the lights come on, literally and figuratively, be ready. I think if you're confident and if you're ready, you'll be fine. I just I'm a firm believer in that and, and but more than anything else I believe in Kyle uh, I've always believed in Kyle and I believe in Kyle when nobody else will <laughs> um, and that's not too often but you know and I think going back to my story early I think that's probably where it came for Skylar she believes in Skylar and she's got a mom and dad and three older brothers who really believe in her too so um, even watching her now you know, she's into different things. She's a cheerleader at her middle school. So she just cheered for football season. And now at the time of this recording, it's basketball season and she's cheering there. And, you know, she also plays tennis. Um, she was playing the piano for it at some point in time, but she stopped. But she's very, very talented. All of my kids are. Um, but she is like when the lights come on and it's showtime, she's ready. And I think um, I think that's very impressive because, again, it's not something that I think we've taught her. She just has it in her. And the thing I always say, and I'll close with this, is that, you know, always be confident in what you do. Um, whether or not you have a podcast or you're doing a presentation at work or you're performing in front of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, just always understand that somebody's always watching and listening to you. And you don't necessarily have to have a platform for people to do that. Um, and if they're watching it and they're listening, um, just give them something to watch and listen to. <laughs> Be you, because they're always watching and listening, even when you think they aren't. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. This has been another edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. The podcast drops every Thursday. And every Sunday at midnight, if you're on social media, hit us up. Uh, 12 Kyle, 12 Kyle podcast across the board, Twitter X, uh, Blue Sky. We are now on Blue Sky. Um, where else? Facebook, Instagram, Threads, uh, and the TikTok. We are there as well. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. If you're on YouTube, you can watch all of our episodes on YouTube. You can also listen on YouTube. We have both video and audio. Uh, just go to YouTube, 12 Kyle podcast. And check us out there. Subscribe, uh, hit the notification button so that you will get notifications when these episodes drop. Uh, pretty soon we will be dropping some YouTube exclusives. So be on the lookout for that. Um, also, 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 if you'd like to contribute to the podcast financially, hit us up on Cash App, dollar sign T W E L V E K Y L E. And also, there's a link in the description box. Click that. You can buy 12 Kyle podcast t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs for the low, low price. And last but not least, as many of you know, maybe you don't know, we have a new baby. It is called the Rap Soul Podcast. You can find the podcast wherever you find this podcast on YouTube as well. Uh, Rap Soul Podcast is the intersection between the 80s, 90s, in 2000s when it comes to rap, soul, hip hop and R&B music. It is the best music podcast that you've never heard. So check it out. Again, that's going to do it for me. I am your boy 12 Kyle. We'll catch you guys next time. 5000. Chill. 
Thanks again for listening to this episode of the 12 Kyle podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and share this podcast with a friend who needs the 12 Kyle podcast in their life. Every listen, every download, and every share helps us grow. Thanks for being a part of the 12 Kyle podcast community. We appreciate your support. We will catch you next time. 5,000.